Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. This is Dawn, I'm Karen, and we have another great episode for you today. We have Christine from Wisdom Within the Winds with us today to talk about oracle card readings. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. welcome Christine. Thank you very much for having me, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for making the trip up here. We get to be outside today, which is wonderful. It's a beautiful yeah. day. Mm-hmm. So. Tell us, Christine, how did you get into doing this? I first got into Oracle cards is probably when I was about 15 or 16 years old, and I saw them in a bookshop, and it was an angel card deck, and there was just something about it that I was drawn to. I, I wasn't sure why, because, you know, nobody in my family was into Oracle cards or anything mystical like that, but there was something about it that, in my soul, like it was just, it was just pulling towards me. And so I bought myself a deck, and then I started using it. And now it's how many years later, and I think I have like 30 decks. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Christine, your journey sounds very similar to Dawn's. You kind of had those inklings when you were a teenager. Myself, it was a little later in life, although I look back and there was all that <laughs> intuition. And, I mean, on this channel, we've talked about our health problems a lot um, and how we've used intuition to kind of guide us that. Do you want to talk about yours? Yes, so I was born with a condition called neurofibromatosis and I have type 1. So it's a bit of a tongue twister, but one thing that it does is it causes fibromas tumors to grow inside. So I'm typically speaking, as long as I'm alive and breathing, I'm going to have tumors growing. And so that was another reason too that sort of held me back from maybe wanting to use oracle cards for other people. Even though I sort of felt this calling on my soul that I want to help and support people, I was always like, why would anybody want healing or support from someone like me? You know, I've got this condition that there's no cure for. And then actually what happened as well is probably would have been about three years ago is that females with NF are more likely to develop breast cancer than the average woman. And they found something suspicious because I had to get checked twice a year. And they actually found something suspicious, so I had to go and get a lump back for me. And thankfully, everything was benign. But that's sort of when I was like being worried about what people might think or whatnot. It was just time to listen to what was calling to my soul. Because even from a very long, young age, like I just always, I felt this calling. I wanted to make a difference in the world and wanted to help people. And that's when I'm like, okay, yeah, just it's time to like take action and just go for it. Really wants to get a reading from someone who is perfect and has not had a single worry and life experience and challenge. I mean, especially to go for for like advice and for guidance, you really want someone who has maybe been in the trenches before and can come to a place of understanding. By being more open about um, yourself, it allows other people to see themselves, see you in them, and creates that nice connection mm-hmm. and that trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. At least that's what I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Now, where did you come up with your name, Wisdom Within the Winds? So I actually came up with it because all my life, nature has just been very, very important to me. Uh, growing up, we had a family cabin in Thunder Bay, so I would spend my summers in the bush, by the water. One thing I would always kind of get fascinated with, there's a special rock that I always sit on, and it's a special little place where I just feel connected to Mother Earth and feel the magic and healing. And I would love to sit there and release. Life is like a wind. You know, we may not know exactly where we're going on our journey, but we're all moving up and down in different directions. And it's just to sort of have, have that faith in the journey wherever you're going. And just the wisdom within yourself, the support that's around you, and just move forward. Yeah, wherever the wind blows. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that too. And actually, we'll get to the reading you did for me in a moment. But there was one page from your reading, I should let you know, with the leaf and the, the saying on it. I have um, kind of like a healing board, a healing vision board. And Put the, added that page to the healing vision board. It's so one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. I like to Tell me about the readings that you do in general so our viewers can understand. The okay, so when I do readings, I do email readings. And the reason I do that is because, for one thing, it allows me to spend more time to like really focus on the reading mm-hmm. and give all my energy instead of maybe having to go by a certain time. And so, and what I do too is I include crystals in the reading. Mm-hmm. So I would do it the same that. as if it was an in-person reading. Like mm-hmm. I, I clear the space. I do sort of like a little invocation prayer before I do it. 
based on my intuition on the question that the person submitted, I'll choose crystals to sort of just to, you know amplify that energy, create that sacred space, and then I just intuitively pick which deck to do. You know, from the thirty decks that I have. Mm -hmm. And then I don't necessarily do it strictly from the guidebook. What I do is I sort of channel from the angelic realm and your spirit guides and your higher self. So I see images in my mind. I'll see certain words, colors. So I always try to tell people too, if you see the card right away, like try not to be nervous or scared because it may not be the exact message on the card. There could be certain components from it. It's almost the, the card is the key to access the message that you need to know. So it may be a certain color on the card it may be a certain word, but it yeah. just it amplifies and just helps that connection to the spirit side of things. And then they'll pass on whatever information, what messages that the person needs to know. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that it was, the card almost was a jumping off point, but there was so much more beyond the card in the information that you provided. So um, what I asked you about was regarding my health, because it is kind of, the predominant issue. So my question was, you know, am I tackling this health problem properly? And you said to reword it, and I, I love that um, because I think I think there's so much more than the the illness or the diagnosis mm -hmm. uh, around any any um, illness, right? You know, it's all about well-being. So you had me reword it saying, you know, am I on the right track? But also, is there more that I should be doing for my well-being? Exactly. Yeah. So, so, I mean. It helps open the door for the messages that you really need right. to come through. Yeah. So I love that. And, and then you also had the crystals that you chose. And the crystals that you chose were amazing. And then we'll get to the cards. So explain um, how you draw the cards. So when I draw the cards, it may sound strange to some people, but the way it works for me is I'll put the instruments up the chakra. So I can actually feel my body temperature burn up, 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 and then I'll get the word stop. And so then I know it's time to stop shuffling, and then whatever card's on the top, that's the one that's meant for the customer. Mm, I love that. That, that's, that sounds perfect. Like, that's a great way to follow it. Yeah. When I do cards, I get um, three numbers. And so say it's like four, seven, eight, I'll shuffle four oh. and then I'll shuffle seven. And then like, you know, like you do, you do it this way. And then, so I shuffle three times, but based on the numbers that I get, it's say four and then I reset and then seven and then I reset and huh. eight, and, but whatever the three numbers are. So everyone has when, their own way of doing it. And when I do it, I like to shuffle until one just flies <laughs> out or if they aren't, you know, then I fan them out and one kind of just keep fanning them and one starts to poke its Mm -hmm. way out right it's interesting you know whatever so, you're meant to know with the card will it'll, find its way to you yes. yeah yeah all right so the first card represented the past but not really yes. right i mean your interpretation of the card was amazing it was the word that came to you was ancestors right so yes. explain that a little bit so yeah so as i was shuffling the card i got the word ancestors and there was just this strong feeling of sort of attachments from the ancestors that are connected to you mm -hmm. and i could actually see in my mind i could see you standing and then behind you in a line there were all these people which were your ancestors and so there was that connection of all the people who came before you mm -hmm. So that was interesting. And it was something that I really, I've done a lot of spiritual work around, you know, my illness, but it was something that I really hadn't considered. So I appreciate you bringing light to that. Now, the second card is about the present, right? Mm -hmm. But um, your interpretation of the card was more that um, I'm giving my energy to others or... You know, like we talked about with Michael Philpott about absorbing Absor other people's energy. That was the issue. And it's a hard one, you know? It's, it's very hard. Even if you try and put those, you know, white light around you or put those protection around you, sometimes, you know, if you're very, very spiritual and an empath and very sensitive and, you know, really want to heal everybody if you can, you just take 
gone, all the energy, and you don't realize, even with the barrier, that sometimes there's things still coming through. And sometimes I feel like that's why I might have this illness. And now, you know, there's many reasons I have the, this illness, but one of them might be that I need to focus on myself, and it's forcing me to, because I have no choice anymore, right? So, but it's still hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was interesting. And then the third card, uh, we got, it kind of came full circle, not necessarily future, I guess, but something to focus mm -hmm. on, which is ancestral healing. Mm -hmm. So not only to be aware of that, um, the ancestors um, that are kind of weighing me down, um, but also to kind of take that one step further and do some cord cutting, cord cutting and, you know, some healing around that, which again is, I've done a lot of things around spiritually working on this illness. And it was one thing that I kind of have missed. Yeah, you haven't done, yeah, I haven't done any of that. This is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way that things line up as well, right? You might not have needed to do it prior. You were doing other things mm -hmm. to prepare you to this yeah, moment. Layers, where now, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. So this is the next layer. Yeah, so I'm going to start working on that a lot. And then you drew two bonus cards. I did. Yeah, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes I just get that little message. Okay, you gotta, you got to pull a couple more cards from them. And again, there's no set lum number. Like sometimes it might be they need one card, uh, two bonus cards. Maybe it might be three bonus cards. But again, just whatever spirit's telling me to pull, then that's that's what I'll do. So yeah, I was, I was told to pull two bonus cards for me, and they were kind of connected together just with that feeling of just sort of charging your batteries and mm -hmm. taking care of yourself Self -care. and that you have love around you um, and i think i mentioned in the email back to you um i'm doing a lot of self-care which is great so i've made that step but the step that i still have to do is the not feeling guilty about mm -hmm. it so i'm doing it <laughs> yeah. it's I so hard it's, i think as a healer you just again you feel like you just need to be giving 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 and yeah. You know, they say like you can't pour from an empty cup. If you're constantly giving, then mm -hmm. it's going to deplete your own energy. Yeah. 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 So it was a great reading. Um, gave me a lot to think about. Um, gives me another element to work on a little bit. Which, rewording your question, is really what brought that extra element. Yes. Right? If you hadn't added, what else can you add to your... Right. You know, to repertoire for... For healing, you, the ancestry might not have even come up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, yeah. It just helps open the door. Exactly. Like, like, whatever you really need right now, it's going to come through. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. what you need may not be what you're thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that extra support. So I just call it an intuitive email reading. And so it's available on my website. So what the customer would do is they would just click on add to cart. And then there's just like a little checkout thing. So they just kind of confirm what their name is what their question is and their email address and then they make their payment and then usually within sort of three to five business days then they'll receive their email reading in their inbox and your website is so it's www.wisdomwithinthewinds.com and we'll include that in the description box mm -hmm. yeah this yeah good. well this is great and thank you so much for coming out and being on the show yeah so so yeah, scroll down, click on the link, and get an amazing reading. Yeah. And make sure you like this video if you liked it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss another episode. So thank you so much, Christine. Thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in. And we will see you again next week. <laughs>